everyone. We made it. I am live. <laughs> and it looks like it's working properly. So hopefully everyone is here tonight who wanted to get reminders for when I was live. Uh, last week, I shared, oh, wait, first I need to tell you who I am. For those of you who are new, um, my name is Brenda Bennett, and I am also known as sugarfreemom.com. And I have been blogging since 2011. And I share sugar-free, low-carb, keto, family-friendly recipes. I share recipes that you can serve to a non-keto crowd. And you can basically not even tell them <laughs> it's keto. They won't care because the food is delicious. How many of you can attest to that? Um, please share where you're from. Hello, hello, Trisha, you're new. And Chastity, nice to meet you. Hello, please share where you're um, where you're viewing from, I'd love to know. I might look different. I just had my hair done today. Thank you very much to my hair salon stylist. She's awesome, Nicole. Um, I was actually having a video shoot today for a couple of recipes from my cookbook, uh, skillet chicken parmesan and banana bread. So in case you didn't know, I wrote a cookbook, uh, Naturally Keto, it's called. It is going to be released October 29th. And um, it is available for pre-order now. It has about 135 recipes. 50 of them are egg-free. No, sorry, 50 of them are dairy-free and another 20 can easily be made egg-free. <laughs> dairy-free, I'm tired. 75 are egg free and 115 or more, I think, are tree nut free. Hello, everyone. And that's because my son has a tree nut and peanut allergy. So I make my recipes mostly without uh, those like almond flour. Um, and the recipes are all gluten free. So whether you're keto or not, I just want to make it clear. Keto really is just lower carb, you know, higher fat, but you would still enjoy this cookbook. I have a lot of dinner recipes in there, a lot of main dishes, a lot of soups and salads. It's not just about desserts. Hopefully you know that. Hopefully you've uh, made my recipes. So how many of you, let me see who's here. Denise from Michigan, Sherry from Indiana. Hello, hello. Oh, Lisa from Massachusetts, you're my neighbor. I'm in Rhode Island. Um, Hello, Barbara from New Jersey, another close one. I love finding out where you're all from. Hello from Pennsylvania, my brother lives in Pennsylvania. And that is Kathy and Cindy from North Carolina. Nice to meet you guys. Welcome, welcome, I'm super excited that you're here. So I told you who I am and where I'm from. Um, I also told you about my new keto cookbook that I was, what I was sharing is that you don't have to be keto to like good food, right? You just have to, you know, you just have to be able to serve your family well, right? And so I have my son here with his friend and his friend was doing the video for me today. So I made this chicken skillet Parmesan and he uh, doesn't eat keto. He doesn't, he doesn't, you know, know what it really is. Um, and so I served them both the dinner after we did the video and they and I said, how did you like it? It doesn't taste any different than a regular chicken Parmesan. So there you go from two boys that are 19 and like 20, right? So that makes me feel good. Doesn't that make you feel good when you can serve food that they're not saying, oh, this really tastes like, you know, diet food or something. Um, so I'm curious, how many of you are do, following the keto diet and how many of you are just low carb? I'd, I'd love to hear. Um, yeah, you love keto. That's great. Good to know. Yeah, I'm always curious. I um, will get into my three tips. I will. I will get into that in a minute. But for those of you who don't know, I've been sugar free since 2004. Um, and I've uh, been gluten free for six years. I think it was 2012. I went gluten free. And about 2000 and uh, 13, I think I was low carb. So I've been low carb for six years. And then I went keto about 2015, but it was a loose approach. And then I really went strict um, 
about a year and a half ago or two years. And that really helped me with my cravings. And that's what the topic we're gonna to talk about today. Three tips to beat sugar cravings. And I've got two quick recipes you, you, you could write down. You might not even need to write down. That'll be easy for you when the cravings hit. So let's see, how many of you are keto? How many of you are low carb? How many of you are just interested in, you know, learning about the diet? Oh, you do both, great. Strict keto for some. Nice. Laura, neither. Okay. Just nothing processed. Okay. And that's how I started back in 2011. I was just uh, sugar free and um, I was more worried about refined and added sugars. So like I said, you can still enjoy good recipes, even if you're sugar free, if you're not necessarily low carb or um, keto, if you don't define yourself like that, then you can certainly um, still enjoy my cookbook and my recipes. Um, if you've made a recipe, I'd love to know if you made one of my recipes. That'd be great. Um, share with me. Now, last week I shared about, uh, so if you want to go back and look on my Facebook page, I also put this on YouTube. Um, I shared about my symptoms um, for my thyroid. I was I am hyperthyroid, um, currently doing very well um, on medication. So I shared last week on symptoms and testing for hyperthyroid. And the week before that, I interviewed Dr. Ken Berry. And that was really great. Uh, he shared a lot of, lot of good information. So tonight's topic is three tips for uh, beating the sugar cravings. And I know you're going to um, know where I'm going with this, and that is to lower your carbs. So if you're still having cravings, which I was when I was just doing low carb, I could not pass on the chips at a party. I just couldn't. Um, you might be having too many carbs in your day. So my low carb day consisted mostly of vegetables. Um, I didn't eat a lot. I didn't eat anything processed, really. Um, I did make smoothies. I did have fruits and vegetables. And I probably had about 75 grams a day of carbs. And I still could not get past. Um, I, I, I didn't have self-control still when it came to potato chips and certain things. I don't know if that's been any of your um, your issues. But one of the way for cravings, I mean, one of the ways to reduce those cravings is to uh eat less of the carbs in your day. I'm saying go below 50. Um, you know, 20 is really, really good. But if you can't get to 20 yet, start reducing a little bit. Uh, 50 grams would be great to get below 50. That will really help reduce your sugar cravings and your carb cravings. Because what I found out is that being sugar free helped for a long time for me, but it wasn't enough because I was still eating too many carbs and I still wanted carbs. So it was definitely a problem for me. And uh, I was just looking at some, some notes. Yeah, some people's typing, great. Yeah, you should definitely be on keto if you have type two diabetes, good for you, good job. And so the second tip, so the first one is lower your carbs. And I think going below uh, 50 is probably the best, the best idea, um, it will help. And um, the second thing is, I lost my train of thought. I was looking at my hair. The second thing um, that I found, I increased my protein. And for a while when I was doing keto, I was kind of worried too much protein was gonna kick me out of ketosis. Well, I was wrong because I was eating way too much fat. And that is another story. Um, you can eat too much fat on keto. Um, you might be the, if you're not losing weight on keto, there's a reason. And for me, it was too much fat. So that's another story. I'll probably talk about that another time. But uh, the second tip I would say is that increase your protein at each meal. You know, get satisfied and fill up on protein at each meal, and you'll notice that you will crave less. You will you will snack less when you have more protein. Um, that worked for me. That definitely worked for me. How many of you um, really count count your macros? Because some people don't. Yeah, Paula, chips are my weakness, but not anymore because now that I've been keto, I can totally not eat them. I don't touch them. They can be in a bowl in front of me and I don't even look at them. I don't care. I don't even want them. It's amazing. Uh, do carbs really cause inflammation? Well, some carbs cause inflammation. Um, most processed food will cause inflammation. Yes, definitely. If you crave sweets at night, um, 
you're not eating enough protein. And that was my second tip. You've got to be increasing your protein and then you will start noticing you're not as you're more full, you're more satisfied and you're not as hungry in between meals and you might not crave because meat is so nutrient dense. It's really, really good for you. So I would say that was my second tip. That's what I did. I switched from increasing and having too much fat to increasing more of my protein at each meal. And, um, that worked for me. Uh, it might not work for everybody. I mean, you have to figure out your thresholds, right? If you are counting your macros, who counts their macros? Anybody? I don't do it as much now. I, I don't. I don't do it. I did it at the beginning because I wanted to know if I was in ketosis, right? So um, if you're in ketosis, you feel really good. I feel really good. So I don't need to count as much now. Um, so it's just one thing that I'm I'm not doing, but I'm not saying, I, I think that you should. If you're, if, you, if you're not having success on keto and you're still having cravings for things, um, because cravings do occur, you know, just because you go keto doesn't mean it's gonna go away completely. If you've had a sweet tooth all your life, like I have, um, there are gonna be days that that cravings still come. But for the majority, um, I'm able to not give in to those temptations because of lowering my carbs, because of adding more protein. Um, and the third thing is just having healthier fat. Don't be afraid of the fat. Don't be afraid of the fat, but there's a balance. Okay. So like for me, I was scared of the fat and, um, but fat is really satiating, right? So, so in order to feel satisfied, you need the healthy fat. Like what's your favorite fat of choice? Yep. What's your favorite fat of choice? Everybody. I love avocados. Um, I use avocado oil, um, butter, butter, heavy cream. Yum. So I'll answer some questions when I'm done with the three tips. But anyway, increase your fat and suggestions for more protein. Well, gosh, you could do uh, jerky. Um, I cook up ground beef and I eat until I'm satisfied <laughs> with the ground beef, um, grass fed ground beef. Uh, I really love, uh, I, I've been loving a uh, flat iron steak um, on the grill. I just like grass fed burgers too. Um, eggs, of course, they're perfect protein, you know? So I definitely say try all, try all the meats, try them all and then pick, pick your favorites and then stick with those. You know, if you know you love ground beef or you love burgers, what's the matter with, you know, having them more frequently? I find I, I, I enjoy chicken, but I don't get as satisfied as red meat. So, I mean, I eat chicken, but I, I don't, I don't feel as full. Like I need more of it in order to feel satisfied. So it's just something with that for me, but it might be different for everybody. Um, so those are my three tips. And so now, cause I don't want to keep on too long. I want to tell you two delicious recipes because cravings are going to happen still. I mean, there are times of the month, you know, for some women, and then there are also just times where you're having um, a day and you're just saying, you know what, I, I just want something and that's okay. Um, but, but, but these two things, these two things you can do, one is dairy free and one is not, uh, that you can easily make them quickly without cooking anything and you will be satisfied and you won't be like, what else is in the fridge? What else is in the cupboard? Right? How many of you want, <laughs> want something like that? Quick, quick, quick. And that's what I did. That's what I did because I can, somebody said almonds. Yeah, I love almonds, but I can eat just too many nuts. That's my problem. Way, way too many nuts. So if I'm having a true craving, like I really need something or I'm going to give in I'm to temptation, I'm going to keep it keto. Here's my first quick, easy recipe. If you want to write it down. Um, I discovered it one time. It was a while ago because now I'm doing dairy free, so I can't have it. But my husband and I, you know, cause he just started keto. Um, about a year ago, year and a half, maybe where, you know, I've been trying to get him on board since like 2015. So, um, he needed something and I was like, well, let me, let me just whip something up in the blender. So here it is. Very simple. One ounce of cream cheese in your blender and two ounces of heavy cream, a pinch of salt, your favorite sweetener of choice, blend it up, get a spoon. And that is all you need. If you want to add a nut butter in there, you can, and that is super delicious. So it's like fluff. It is so satisfying and so good. You can eat it right out of the blender and that will satisfy you. And that's all you need. Now, many of you can't have dairy. I can't have dairy anymore. Um, 
I'm, I'm, I'm on an elimination diet, sadly. I hope to bring dairy back one of these days, um, but right now I can't have dairy. So what do I do? I take two pieces of dark, 85% dark chocolate, two squares. And if you can't have tree nuts, you know, if you can't have tree nuts, I would suggest some almond butter on there. A, a little spoonful of almond butter on the chocolate with some coarse sea salt on top. Absolutely satisfying and delicious. Quick, easy, you don't need to make anything. Um, if you can't have the tree nuts, then try it with sunflower seed butter, really good. Try it with coconut butter. Either way, those are quick and easy. You could also go on my website and make my one minute chocolate cake and whip up some cream. You could do that too, but sometimes that's just too much work, right? <laughs> so those were my those were my two easy recipes, super quick, super easy. And um, now I'll see if I can answer any questions. I hate eggs. How can I like them? You can put them into things. <laughs> um, if you don't like them scrambled, what about a quiche um, with bacon and, and stuff like that? If you don't, well, you don't have to eat eggs. I mean, you can, you can still get in your protein without eating eggs. It's not a requirement for keto. You don't have to like them. Don't force yourself to eat something you hate. That would be sad and horrible. <laughs> uh, please post the recipe. I wasn't able to write it down. I don't have a recipe posted. It's not even a recipe. It's an ounce of cream cheese for the dairy friend lovers, ounce of cream cheese, an ounce or two, depending on how thick or smooth you want it, of heavy cream, a pinch of salt, and your sweetener of choice. That's it. And if you want to add enough butter, you can. And then if you can't, um, if you can't have dairy, then do two squares of chocolate with nut butter or, or, or coconut butter or sunflower seed butter with salt on top. It's the salty sweet thing. It's absolutely delicious. That's all I got for you guys today. I do love fat bombs, but like I said, I was turning to those. I guess if you make fat bombs, fantastic. I have a blackberry fat bomb on my um, on my, pee, on my uh, website, sugarfreemom.com. Um, so yeah, if you have fat bomb in the fridge or freezer, eat, eat that. I also have a chocolate fudge recipe in, that's in the refrigerator. Um, for me, having the stuff in the fridge, I will want to eat one every day. So I really only want to have something like this when I'm truly craving. Um, I don't want to have it around because for me, it's just a bad habit. Not that, that you can't have keto treats, but it, like I said before, if you're not losing weight, there's a reason, you know, there's definitely a reason. So let me see, can I help you by answering any more questions? Why did you gain so quickly? Why do you gain so quickly when you break keto? I, I don't know um, how, how much have you gained? Have you gained? Like, I don't, I don't cheat. So I haven't gained. So like, I'm not sure. Has anybody gained on keto? If you, if you break yourself, probably all the sodium and the salts and the, uh, in the processed foods, if you have a cheat day or something, that's probably one reason. Do I have a low carb keto pancake recipe? Yes, I do on my blog. And it's only four ingredients and it's called four ingredient ricotta pancakes. You can find that on sugarfreemom.com. The best sweetener for baking, I like a combination. I use a little bit of Swerve with some liquid Stevia. The Swerve has a cooling effect and the Stevia, some find it's bitter. When you add the two, they balance each other out. Fantastic. You won't notice anything. Monkford sweetener is fantastic. I like the brand Lakanto. How long have I been? 18 minutes. I don't want to keep you guys too long. Let me see if I can answer any more questions. Um, let's see. I'm not seeing any more questions. I missed them. Butter, bacon, grease, yum. Ribeyes, my favorite. <laughs> Thank you guys for all the comments. This is great. I would love to know, do you have any topics that you'd like to talk about next time? I plan to do this every Thursday. I actually have an interview happening next Thursday. Um, uh, I, I'm not gonna share any information yet, but I will. I will share it as soon as I schedule it and confirm it, then you guys will hear the best. You will hear a great interview uh, for next week. But I'd love to know some topics if you have any suggestions for some other topics that you'd love to know more about. Okay, here's a question. I miss bread and desserts, but really have not liked any of the new low carb breads or breakfasts or desserts made with almond flour. Does coconut flour make things taste any better? It really depends on the recipe, Jennifer, because 
you can find some recipes that have coconut flour and they are like a brick because they're too dry and dense. But I can't use almond flour mostly because of my son. So I've perfected working with coconut flour and it has been a hard road, let me tell you. I have the most delicious, soft, tender uh, muffins, coconut flour muffins, chocolate chip muffins on my website that use coconut flour. And I will make anyone who has had a bad experience with coconut flour a converter because you just gotta get a good recipe. Sorry, can you hear that clock? That was my grandmother's clock. clock. Um, you just got to get a good recipe. And I have a coconut flour sandwich bread on my blog that is the texture of honey wheat. I'm telling you what, it really is seriously delicious. All right, guys, that's all for tonight. I don't want to keep you any longer. Uh, like I said, you can go back and find the, the video on symptoms. Um, go to my video section on my Facebook page. If you're watching this on my Facebook page, go to videos and look up live and you'll see symptoms and testing for hyperthyroid. You'll also see the live with Dr. Ken Berry. And if you're watching this on YouTube, I would love it if you would subscribe and I would appreciate that. And thank you all for joining in. And again, please leave me some questions. I'll try to answer those. And I would love some more topics uh, for next time. See you next Thursday. Ciao. Now, how do I stop this thing? <laughs> I am so um, not tech savvy, not tech savvy. Stop streaming. Here it is. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>